I used to, I used to fear, I used to fear heavy vehicles, so what did I do? I went and got my license. Look at them all, waiting patiently to go out again, like an army. It's pretty insane. The manifesting of this rage that is felt within the autist who's constantly punished by the society with the current value system leads them to want to help manifest that resentment in the form of destruction of both themselves and of the society. Which I think that correlation shows that society exists within ourselves and the battle is honestly within, which sort of sounds like a cliche. But anyway, and it's raining outside, the rain keeps me company way better than people do. It's funny, even when you ask regular humans for an explanation on why they do things as they do. The explanation itself, when you zoom in on a resolution high enough, which is what is required by people who, you know, like the autists who don't intuitively understand situations, these, these solutions with high enough resolution don't make sense. So they say, for example, why, why is it that people have, and I did a little survey on my blog, right? And I got a, like a tiny amount of answers. Why is it that humans want to, when you ask them, why do you guys say, how was your day? They say it's because we care about the other person and so for we want to know how the day is. Now that if you zoom in on that, it's actually a circular reference argument. It does nothing. The real answer so that someone like the autist can understand would be something like it is an expression in order to establish an emotional connection, which is required by the neurotypical in order to, so that both parties know that there can be potential dialogues in the future between them for the sharing of information if it's so required. It also reinforces human solidarity, which helps push people away from the worst possible emotional state, which would include orbiting that uh, black hole of the singularity of hell, of your own private hell. It would include depression and anxiety, which is where the autist lives. And I would call that the anxietosphere. I don't know. It's a sphere that, like you have the stratosphere, atmosphere <laughs> so i remember once i went to mount olympus and when i got close to the top of the mountain there was a cafe and it was a brick cafe with wooden furniture and there was no phone reception the people were nice the food was beautiful yeah it sort of does feel like you're a god up there or you're at the chair of the gods let's say it feels like you're at the chair of the gods things are much clearer without the distractions of what was below that mountain which was a girl that i was in absolutely in love with and uh, time at that point had not yet revealed to me that that love was unrequited but what i have noticed about the orders is that we or they the high functionings at least are gravitate towards people that seem to be gifted with high emotional intelligence intuitively that feels it's like it's someone who seems to be rewarded in the current society for being who they are and there is a resentment there. there. There is there being excluded from that society immediately and intrinsically I notice an observation of resentment and jealousy. And it's a constant battle within yourself to fight that part of you which wants to burn the world down for not receiving the adulation that you notice that others seem to receive for no effort. Funnily enough, that actually equates very you could say it's almost isomorphic to to the story of that mythological story of Cain and Abel, where one brother's failed attempts at surviving in, in the society, in the world around him and in, the, in that value system, manifested in such self-hatred, which exploded out to hatred of the society itself. And of course, eventually resulted in the murdering of the other brother, the one that was so accepted. That is what brings me to these two things that I mentioned, the fear, which I face and the hatred that manifests in the hatred of someone else when it really reflects one's own inadequacies. These two things are what brings me to the President of the United States. Two reasons. One, what I fear is, hey, look at that, I'm getting the finger. What I fear is why I watched thousands, I'd say thousands of hours of every single one of his speeches, every, almost every speech of people related to him and around him for the last two years. Understanding something to a degree of resolution, which it seems to me that most humans don't, don't observe the world at, let's say. And that of course alleviates the fear, but it also helps you see that a lot of the over vitriolic reactions 
that people see. I think are specifically due to this orange person reminding them of something within themselves that they utterly detest. And it was so buried that it explodes with such violence because of him sucking it out like a magnet from beneath the surface. I'm speaking very conceptually at the moment because I've got to go home. That's all I have so far. Any questions, let me know.